Welcome to uh, Line Break, the third Line Break of Poetry Month. Um, not that month's really a measurement of time anymore. It's more like a, um, almost was like a physical constraint. But here we are with you, coming very fortunately from Dar Darawal country uh, in the Illawarra. Um, I want to acknowledge any uh, uh, elders, um, future or present, uh, that might be uh, also just generally, but also might be tuning in, but also any First Nation poets uh, from anywhere that are tuning into um, this line break tonight. Yeah, I also want to acknowledge um, all First Nations people watching. And like David said, we're here on beautiful Darawal country. Um, we're in lockdown. I'm guessing you are too. Um, put your hands up if you're not. Put your hands uh, up. That's good enough. That's good. That's good. Enough. I like that. Um, yeah. Put your hands up if you're not. I like that. That's great. Tell um, us. Tell us what's. Um, tell us how you're going. How are you doing? Because we really, we were just saying beforehand, as in two minutes ago, um, while we were trying to eat dumplings. Um, just wanted to check in with everyone. How are you? What's going on in your um, in your worlds? How big or small does your world uh, feel and what's a skew in it? I actually brought my wrong glasses. These ones oh, are, which ones are, the are broken ones? They're on a slight angle, but maybe that's a, a look. And I've just squirted. Um, anyone have that thing where they do the thing with the, um, the hand sanitizer, but it's in a pump and it shoots out at an unexpected <sighs> rate and I've just shot it all over myself. Um, so yeah, sorry. That's, that's that's the world right now. I mean, the world's in a pretty bad state. I feel very fortunate. Um to be in lockdown here in a weird way, um, which is a strange Why thing to kind of say. Huh? Why? It, well, Darawal land is so beautiful. Mm -hmm. Everything's happening in Kabul and uh, mm -hmm. the world. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, there's, but also really aware that people are really doing it hard in lockdown, including members of our team. We had a team meeting on Monday and um, everyone's struggling in their own way so let us know how you're doing we'd like to hear that before Just number heard... six from jen compton number six number six number oh that's your sixth lockdown jen compton oh my god really jen yeah sixth and, all, and i just heard that um aotearoa has gone into lockdown level four solidarity to all all my whanau and cousins um take care please take good care um yeah it's hard to know what to say in these times in terms of um, the world at the moment. Um, but, yeah, I, I guess I really want to hear from everyone. Please write comments about what's going on in your world. Um, and also just, yeah, like really want to acknowledge poets that have had books come out in this period. Like I, I did myself early last year. A lot of people have. And. It's it's yeah, it's minor in a world global scale, sure, but it, it is a real impact to not have to get to launch it, um, to get to sell it at gigs. So important, the kind of gig economy of poetry. So, um, you know, uh, so beautiful to see you, Sister's Eye. Sister's um, Eye. Also, just saw Sister's Eye uh, last Wednesday night for um, Hope One's beatboxing meets poetry workshop. It was amazing. Hey, Sister's Eye. Gosh, it was good to have you in that space. And Sister's Eyes coming up later in the show, as is uh, Jen Compton. Some of the poets uh, spoken word artists you're going to see tonight. But it is Poetry Month still, despite we're here still. Uh, for our third line break. Halfway. We're still with you. We're and, halfway. Um, we are, yeah, I don't know. I, I kind of love the community kind of space of this at the moment, in amongst it all. Um, it's not pre-recorded. It is live. If you can comment up. How do we prove it's live? Um, that was live. That was live. Uh I mean, more significant emotional pain, but that's okay. Oh, Physical pain is move almost over just a little bit. Yeah, I'm just going to move Cookie's here. Cookie's live. Cookie's live. That's uh, live. Cookie, show it. Tell everyone that you're live. Cookie just told you today's date, but we are here with you, and well, let's get into I hope some. I didn't um, hurt you there, sorry. No, it's fine. It's oh. um, it's an OHNS issue, and I <laughs> register that with work. Um, there are Leo Randerson, Mister Dead. You are a nerd. Well, that's kind of random. I don't know means and Leo, we don't have context, but Leo, more. Emily says cookie there you go emily collier says cookie scott patrick mitchell <laughs> says cookie i don't know if that's just you know someone's been Hello. smoking a lot of weed and they're just you know hungry but it could be that they're naming <laughs> the dog and that's great so let's get into some magnificent What's up first we got pretty special triple triplet where's the run first up here? we have one of our amazing poetry ambassadors and someone asked us about that like why ambassadism. Have, yeah why have why have a poetry ambassador and why aren't they poets and it's like well 
some of them are actually poets and or they're poetry adjacent or their writing is poetic or they just have a great line. Paralletic poets. Don't know what that means. Parallel. Parallel. That's Parallel. a mouthful. Um, Parallel. Dr. Carl has a great love of poetry. Uh, if you go onto the website, he'll talk about his reflection of encountering poetry first in children's sort of rhymes uh, in the Wollongong Library Pure down here. Laura Jean. Um, so, yeah, Dr. Carl, and uh, he's about to read a found poem which was done by Ella O'Keefe based on his text found from his uh, little book of um, climate uh change science so we're going to see him read that which is really special and then we have recent work press and who who who's up first from recent work press shane no shane's shane's going to do a little oh, limbo that's right each line break we have people different publishers we're going to feature talking we've asked some questions about have you guys been kind of following along so um we've been doing feature publishers and Within those publishing houses, we've been featuring poets from those publishing houses. So first up, we had Kent and his chickens from Cordite. We didn't have anyone last week, but we, we, we got giveaways. No last week, There'll be giveaways from recent beautiful work. Beautiful Magabala last week. Yeah, and Shane. Keep telling and us how you're going. And then straight after Shane, we're going to have our first recent work uh, feature poet, who is the legendary, the one and only Jen Compton. Let's get into some poetry. This poem, a found poem, based on my book, Dr. Carl's little book of climate change science, is called Sunlight and Wind Are Free. Sunlight and wind are free, a kind of glue. Your loudspeaker simultaneously broadcasts molten iron in precise quantities. A kind of glue, adding seaweed, molten iron in precise quantities, not preparing for the future. Adding seaweed, when plants respire, not preparing for the future. Join sand and aggregate and then harden. When plants respire, ships have lots of spare room. Join sand and aggregate and then harden, buried sunshine. Ships have lots of spare room, a blended wing. Buried sunshine, no, a blended wing. Remarkably compliant, no, this lovely little atom is innocent. Remarkably compliant. Dip your foot into the surf. This lovely little atom is innocent. Slow motion dying. Dip your foot into the surf. Work on ruminants. Slow motion dying. A nearby glacier now floods the mine. Work on ruminants. New category, catastrophic. A nearby glacier now floods the mine. Tiny delicious cherry tomatoes. New category, catastrophic. Remember the equation? Tiny delicious cherry tomatoes. A dead tree more valuable than a living tree. Remember the equation? Imperfect natural thermometers. A dead tree more valuable than a living tree. The straight physics of this. Imperfect natural thermometers. Take the state of Queensland. The straight physics of this. Yes, we make huge quantities of concrete. Take the state of Queensland, the evil twin. Yes, we make huge quantities of concrete in one of the world's hottest oil patches. The evil twin looks like a flying triangle in one of the world's hottest oil patches. Our planet is a bit stretchy, looks like a flying triangle. A certain amount of heat is coming. Our planet is a bit stretchy. Sunlight and wind are free. This was a found poem. It's called a pantoum, P-A-N-T-O-U-M. 15 stanzas, four lines each. It echoes a figure in my book, Dr. Carl's Little Book of Climate Change Science, that carbon dioxide levels in the atmosphere reached around 415 parts per million at the start of 2021. Bye. Hi, it's Shane from Recent Work Press. We work and live on 
Gunwale and Gambari country. I'd like to acknowledge those original inhabitants and say that Indigenous sovereignty was never ceded. We've been busy this year. Uh, our schedule contains somewhere over 20 titles, production in 2021. In the first half of the year, we're very proud to have published a number of debut collections, including work by James Lucas, Yerge Beaumont, Jackie Malins, and Paul Collis. And we've also brought out some new work by people like Rico Craig, Sandra Renew, Penny Drysdale, Ross Donlan, uh, and Anne Elvie's wonderful Obligations of Voice, and Jennifer Compton's The Moment Taken. We've also brought out a really wonderful new anthology uh, we were involved with called What We Carry, which is poetry on childbearing. And this book is a really diverse uh, collection that illuminates uh, the endlessly different ways uh, for the potential to carry life and the way it's experienced. In the second half of the year, we're publishing some exciting new collections, uh, including the debut by uh, multi-award winning poet Damon O'Brien, Animals with Human Voices, and I think a really superb uh, debut by Belinda Rule, Hyperbole. We also have a new book coming out by Philip Hall, uh, Cactus, which deals with Philip's survival through uh, a mental health crises and very compelling verse-prose hybrid by Heather Taylor Johnson, Rhymes with Hyenas, which takes a group of uh, female literary characters from uh, canonical literature and reimagines them as a kind of poetry writing group in contemporary Adelaide. We're also involved with bringing out Borderless, uh, which is a new anthology of uh, international feminist poetry and we're really looking forward to the Not Very Quiet anthology, uh, which is coming out in December. There's a lot of other stuff going on, so uh, check out our website uh, for all the details uh, on all these titles and, and more that are coming up. Hi, I'm Jennifer Compton, and I live and work on Boomerang land. And I'm going to read a poem from my new book, The Moment Taken, which was published by Recent Work Press in June. Three instances. I am already forgiven over and over again. There is nothing to regret. When I am thinning radish, I munch the thinnings up in all their dirt. I like a bit of dirt now and then. Knock me off my perch. It is disgusting to hear me braying like a proud fool. I disgust myself. I sit in my front garden like an old woman, my hands loose in my skirted lap, and I feel the weight of my destiny lift off me. A blackbird in silhouette with one golden eye perched in the leafless persimmon tree. We all know that particular tree dangles golden fruit from a leafless branch, don't we? We do now. Sudden, so perfect, mind's eye. I am loved. One golden eye, and below, golden fruit upon the bough. One of our best, seriously one of our best poets. I mean, and best is most poets, but Jen is the best. Um, and I am biased because I just think Jen's got a, Jen's just one of those poets that's got an amazing a body of work. To have a body of work like Jen does and this new book, um, The Moment Taken, which it's is an incredible yeah. book. Jen sent me a signed copy too, which was really, oh, the light colors. So anyway, oh yeah, you can kind of see. I oh, don't know. Anyway, whatever. What Studio lighting. Um, what does it say? Anyway, Jen, Jen's amazing and another poet that hasn't been able to launch their book during this. And we are giving a copy away. And all you have to do is below, um, gee, the lighting is really intense in here, uh, is puts this hashtag in. And I think the hashtag is, if it comes up now, it might, may or may not, uh, the moment taken, the title of the book. 
when the moment comma taken with the hashtag oh no press jennifer apologies you have to press jennifer uh interesting hashtag press jennifer <laughs> hashtag press jennifer nice one izzy uh, and i think it's perfect it's great and um you have a chance to win so just get those hashtags going trying you know we're going to give away three recent work uh, titles tonight um to support the publishers but also the publishers um supporting you and putting books into your hands so that's that's incredible um can i just say something yeah. i like a bit of dirt every now and then <laughs> that was such a good line i love jen oh I yeah love... i missed the context then i just thought that was like a random sort of um poetry yeah, jen just said it. yeah i thought it was like a poetry tourette's um Actually, if everyone could just tell us now, just a random a random line that comes to mind right now. Um, it can be from Jen's or yeah, any poem. Got? A random line. Too. Just give us a random line right now, like poetry, <laughs> Tourette's. What have you got? Um, uh, Please look, just throw it out Come there. On. Um, I am so impressed, Jen. <laughs> Lots of love to Jen. But what's a random poetry line? It doesn't have to be a line that exists. It could be just your mind needing a detour into a new space. Does the have, pup have a piece to recite? Um, well, Rowan, thank you for asking because Cookie does. Cookie's always ready for a poem, aren't you, Cookie? She's looking for an agent. She's looking for a three-book deal, and that's not going to happen yeah. in Australia. Um, <laughs> so she's looking overseas. But, yeah, what's the line of poetry that just comes to you randomly Cookie. right now? Good girl. One great thing about live streams is just the ability to kind of interact, which is sort of yeah. beautiful Come compared to uh, press hashtag cookie. press cookie. Love it um so yeah throw up some things i hope you're interacting with each other about random lines that come to mind um and you're doing the hashtag press jennifer below hello uh, ben Z, you winner of uh 30 and 30 prompts you won last week didn't you and his line was i could have been a pair of ragged claws love it i know that line Oh, this is going to be one of these awful things where um, people are going to put up lines that as people in poetry there's always an expectation that poets should know where the lines come from, but some people like that. But I'll leave that for the academics. Uh, Laurie May's line. And That's later amazing. poets came weaving. Yes, Laurie May. Of bearded wire. Oh, You're gonna be I hearing love from. Uh... Breeze, but yes, I love it. What do we have coming up in our next section? Keep doing the so... hashtags. We're here for you in as with as much energy energy as one can muster in these days and nights. Mm. So uh our next triplet of videos which aren't live they are pre-recorded um so the next one is last week we heard from grace lucas pennington and the week before we heard from declan fry it's a new section called book brief um this week is from um a very very special human being called winnie dunn winnie um has tongan ancestry and i just love winnie I really love Winnie. Um, make sure you check out the Cordite issue that Winnie was the guest um, editor of. It's amazing. Um, Brown, Brown Face, I think it was called. Uh, so Winnie is one of the general manager of Swap Shop in Western Sydney. Um, puts out amazing work, does really incredible stuff with community and is really at the forefront of promoting, platforming, giving voice um, to so many writers that wouldn't necessarily have an opportunity to share their their work. So much love and respect for Winnie. So, um, Winnie's yeah. awesome. Sweatships Winnie are is... awesome. I just want to say a random line. Uh, I do not like my face. And that was going out to Pascal, who I just saw put that up as part of her quote. And I thought that, that little exit, like, actually, when, I don't particularly if... like my face today. It might be the lighting. It could be the world. I don't know. So what if... if faces are overrated, really? Um, I, I think. I wish I could put Cookie's face on mine. Yeah, I think. I think it's. I do not like, like my face. There's a lot of freedom in that line. Um, and what do we have after we? Well, David, after what's next Winnie, on the menu? We will be hearing from um, Shane Strange at Recent Work Press. Answering again. a question that's been uh, sent so that's in. That's a publisher. Publisher question. Response. Yeah. And then um, we'll be hearing from a recent work poet. And following on from Jen Compton, we'll be hearing from. Damon O'Brien, based up in Mianjin there. Debut collection from Damon. He's won a bunch of awards. Mel. Look at Mel. Oh, Dave, I love your face. <laughs> Mel. <laughs> Mel. 
Mel, one of, one of the best, I love best your people. face, Mel. Oh, uh, we all come on, Mel. We all have nights where we don't like our faces, or faces when we don't like our nights. It all, yeah. But I, Mel, thank you. Um, enjoy this poetry. We'll see you on the other side. Hopefully, I'll have a new face. See you soon. <laughs> I would like to acknowledge and pay my respects, my fucker upper upper, to the Cabrigal of the Dark Nation, as the original custodians of the Fairfield LGA, as a Tongan raised solely by Tongan women and men. I give my offer, my love, to our shared histories and cultural values. But also, as someone with colonial English heritage, I humble myself, the law, to the First Nations people, lands, waters, and histories of this immense island that my white ancestors and descendants continue to colonize and unjustly claim. It is from these two worlds within myself that I recognised that sovereignty was never ceded and that so-called Australia always was, always will be, Aboriginal land. Well, I have the pleasure um, of reviewing How to Make a Basket uh, by Jazz Money. Uh, and before I start that review, I would like to read a little excerpt from we rise. It used to be all white men shit. When I turned on the news, when I was little, it was the same. Shitty white liberal prime minister shit. Shitty Pauline Hanson shit. Shitty gap that needed closing. Shitty fear of black, black, brown, of women, of people fleeing wars that we'd started. Well, I love this book, um, as you can tell. Uh, and in Latin, the word text literally translates to thing woven. I believe this is the answer to Jasmoni's procedural title, How to Make a Basket. Throughout her debut collection, Moni literally weaves words, sentences, phrases, metaphors, and narration into the shapes of rivers and constellations, acting as a printed interpretation of unceded sovereign lands. From invasion to 2020, which is plattered with the Wiradjuri language and queer, non-binary, and black, black, brown records, Moni's basket comes together and carries us into an uncertainly bright future. How to make a basket is a must read for every so-called Australian. Okay. Um, in your opinion, what does the future for poetry publishing look like? Um, well, the future will probably look a lot like the past in this country. You know, it's a marginal business um, done for love and not money and, you know, chronically underappreciated, you know, yet it, it survives and it thrives uh, largely due to the efforts of uh, people who think that it's important work uh, and necessary for the cultural life of Australia. Um, what forms that will take, who can say, um, but I, I suspect it will be uh, fairly similar to what we've seen in the past. Uh, I'm really liking the diversity of poetry uh, and breadth of poetry at the moment in Australia. I think it's a really rich scene. Um, hearing those voices that have not always been heard in the past. And I'm liking the challenges that are arising to what makes a poem, you know, whether it's spoken word or experimental or, you know, the traditional lyric. Um, it's led me to constantly question what poetry is, um, which is a really good thing. Um, and I think, you know, hopefully the future holds a space for, for all those things, all those traditions and innovations uh, in a genuinely inclusive environment. I'd really like to see uh, that diversity reflected in the publishing field, not so much in what poets or what books get published, but in 
who decides what gets published. I think if I had a wish for the future of Australian poetry, it would be that. Hi, my name is David O'Brien. I'm reading my poem today from Kwandamooka land in Wynnum, Queensland. I pay my respects to their elders, past, present and emerging. The Mapmaker's Tale She came in through the clatter of the doorway, behind her the squalling storm like a wave's black tongue, and in her hands a sheaf of maps and mildew, and franked and mothy deeds to lands long washed out of the way by indifference, and the blue melt and the green gloss of the ice. I had to tell her that I had no jurisdiction below the greedy fingers of the highest tide, that her father's promises and titles had been drowned when the islands had gone under, and the shores had climbed up the first world sneer to the hills. The old lives that we followed have been overturned. The lines we stood behind with our shields and swords, and told the world it could not take its shelter, all overrun, all gone into a swallow, and the world's poor wander, whether we will it or not. She cursed me as a whale might curse a hunter, as a spear might curse the hand that flung it, and took back those deeds, the wax and the paper, which proved to be a poor seal to the water to the willing and washing of her ancestors, the salting of her ancestors in their lost graves. She warned that she went to treat with one who owns the water, that on nights like this I should sit uneasy in my office where all the lines of yes and no are tangled and blur and twitch like so much compromise. For the storm is blowing straight against my door, and it blows the tide behind it to heights before unknown. She turned and left, her hair wild as the weather, and where she stood, the brief puddle of her leaving formed a map I have little power to decipher, and none to alter. And by the door, a single sequin scale. Thank you, Red Room Poetry. Happy Poetry Month. Damon. Uh, Damon O'Brien, new book out with recent work press. Another poet. What's it called again? You've got the title there, haven't you? Animals with Human Voices. That's right. I always want to flip the two things around. Animals humans with, hum with Animal Voices. You want to say Yeah, that? I want to say Humans with Animal Voices. Yeah. Voices with Animal Humans. I mean, <laughs> Fact is, our debut collection. Um, congratulations to Damon. Voices. Yeah, uh, Cookie with Non Cookie Voices. Cookie with Human uh, Voices. So, yeah, go to Recent Work Press, and we are about to give a copy away. Actually, have we done a winner for the first one? I don't know. Should we do it? Should we do a winner for who, who won, won the Jen first one? Compton? Did We're we... about to do our big draw, big draw to see. Here it goes. This is where there's um, big tension. Good one, Jen. Who won, uh, Jen? Here we go. It's pacing through. Going, Laurie going. Mays in the mix, Sister Zai, Ali is. Laurie I mean, May. I mean, this is about as exciting as going to a nightclub and having drinks. And Roya. Oh, good on you, Roya. You, oh, sorry, Cookie, clapping, you disturbed you. Um, yeah, you've won a copy of uh, Jen Compton's book, This Moment so, Taken. Congratulations. Hey, Roya, do us a favour and um, can you message Red Room with your... Just message us so with your, we can with, be with in your touch bank with you. details and <laughs> current balance um, and your star sign. Star sign, yeah, exactly. Um, but no, please send us your details um, and we'll send the book just out so to we you. can get in touch with you to organise postage. How are all your faces going? Yeah, um, show us your faces. Actually, talking about poetry and faces, um, what what's your favourite poetry film? It can be a, a poetry biopic or it can be a poetic <laughs> film. What's your poet, favourite poetry film? Mine. Is Henry Full and, and controversial? It's such a brilliant film. My most disappointing poetry film is Patterson. I know lots of people loved it. I thought I thought it was terrible. Um, there you go. I've lo I've probably lost three um, overzealous watches, but that's okay. Um, what's yours, Annie? Your favorite poetry film? Just on the top of your head, what comes to mind? It's sort of 
poetic and sort of mm. does it for you. Anything with Laurie Anderson in it? Oh, the dog heart of a dog mm -hmm. was great, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. That was probably that was incredible. Um, but I'm with you on Patterson. Um, we actually watched that together, and I think it I was think probably it what caused the end of our relationship. Our, yeah, we just both hated it so much. We were yeah. like, "Can't do this anymore." We can't cement this relationship oh, in poetry. Karen! Hate. Um, somebody likes to turn us on side of the uh, spotless mind. Cherry Moon by Prince. And yes, Prince is poetry. And don't actually, ask. If it counts as a poetry moon, if it is to you, then yes. We got trolled once for um, saying Prince's ly lyrics is poetry, so I totally support that. Oh, I'll have to check that out, Pat. Maya Darren's Meshes of the, of the Afternoon. afternoon. Wow. Bring us your poetry films. What yeah, do you, what do you love? It. Hamilton. Yeah, of course. Bring it. That's Mel. great. Mel. Of course. Mel. Yeah, you're just not Patterson. <laughs> Hamilton, yes. <laughs> Patterson, I no. I need to see Hamilton. That's the big musical. Okay. Isn't it? I think the thing with Patterson was like I actually think the poetry in it wasn't very good, but oh, it was also so it was slow. just so it was like just, oh, earnest and slow oh, and so self-aware like, that it was poetic. Oh, oh. Anyway, for the Patterson fans, we're the really glad you're here. And the slow. We're really glad you're here. Oh yeah, okay. If we're gonna move into that kind of territory, Jen, the Russian Hamlet. Jen, are you making that up? No, Jen. Jen makes nothing up. Um, if you're gonna see a Jim Moosh film, see Ghost Dog. Spirited Away. That's yeah, of good course. as beautiful as great. Yes, great. We, uh, we both. My favorite poetic scenes from Blind Spotting. Mel, what's Blind Spotting? I'm gonna check that out. Make Me sure too. you. I'm uh, glad we can go back and follow through all these. And watch comments. So I Married an Axe Murderer for the Woe Man poem, which um I know Pascal Whoa. Burton will be particularly Sorry, a fan what's of. Sorry, to my. Um, it's all right. We're alive. Don't worry about that. Computer there. Yeah, just don't touch that. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah, cool. It's okay. Um, anyway, tell us your poetry films. Forgive us for our... We're in lockdown, so we just had a cathartic Patterson explosion moment. We're about, going um, to give away. Oh, yes, give away. Thank you. Um, thank you, Izzy. Or and the hashtag David, is... David, whoever uh, just brought that up then. Our behind-the-scenes crew, thank you for doing this and keeping us on track. Um, the recent hashtag Damon. is... Recent Damon. Hashtag recent Damon. To win a copy of Animals with Human Voices. Recent Damon. That sounds like a um <laughs> tell us actually if Recent Damon was a company, what what kind of company would it be? What would his product be? Recent Damon. I like that as a name. That's I, excellent. I'd like to register that. You know, if you're calling up Recent Damon, what are you <laughs> ordering? So true. You know, I want 12 of thanks, Recent Damon. What sort of what's happening there? Um, anyway, look, this is a lockdown How are we narrative. Going for time? We're going great, but we should probably get back into some. Where um, are we at? 7:38. Yeah, we're great. But we have right. some fantastic stuff coming up. Uh, we, down the track, we have Vidya, Sister Zai, and a special guest. But we're in this next section. Oh, yeah, yeah. We who do we have? The next section, um, yeah. So the next, you were going to? Oh, okay. Mm. Next up, we have Tom Hogan, amazing musician, uh, sometimes performs a Scott Sandwich. And he, we've asked different musicians for Line Break, commissioned them to interpret poetry a song. And he has taken on a Curly Saunders uh, piece. And it, this is great. It, it's... Uh, Curly's a dear friend of his. And then after that, Shane Strange is back answering another of your questions as a publisher. And we're really grateful for publishers actually responding to the questions because they don't have to. And then in, yeah, this, do. in this book, we finished with another recent work, Poet, because they're a featured publisher tonight. And that is, I can't remember who. Let's have a look. It's, now, I've been saying Jersey with a hard J, but actually it's Jersey. Jose Beaumont. Who's got a debut collection, just moved to the States. Hmm. Tom, Shane, Jose, we'll see you Jose. on the other side. See you soon.
Uh, next question. Do you think it's advantageous to have a collection that has thematic links? 
while it isn't necessary or even possible, um, I do like the boldness of working towards a theme of having that intent in the work. You know, whenever I get a, a award-winning collection from uh, the UK, for example, <clears throat> they often have that thematic sort of underpinning. And I think this might come from the fact that the opportunities to publish poetry in Australia are so uh, limited that poets feel like they have to try and get everything in. And uh, I'd like to see that change a little bit. Um, last year, for example, we published Ben Dodd's uh, Airplane Baby Banana Blanket, which dealt with the, uh, the, the bizarre <laughs> true story of, of Lucy, a chimpanzee, uh, raised as the daughter of a, uh, a psychotherapist in Oklahoma in the 60s and 70s. And it was a you know a bold move by Ben, and I think it really paid off. Uh, I'm glad it exists, and Australian poets should be encouraged to make such moves. It has been 54 days since you died. I think about you a lot. Wonder how many stars count your absence at night. Some things can't be fixed. Fifty-five days ago, had you called, I would have phoned it in. This I know, and my morning lulls and stuns in orchestral swings of shame. I am poor conductor, tremolo nerves. I need distance from the din within Nessun Dorma. I head for Narciso. I am greeted at the dock by sirens and extinguishers. My ship is fine. I brought the smoke with me. This barren world is cold, but the city's engine heats all from below. Generators keep the air flowing, the gravity regulated, artificial atmosphere intact. When the solar winds come, they go. I will stay. The dock above abode collapsed in the night. Stress. The house is fine, freezer unthawed, but my ship was exposed. Rubble caught port side wing, flipped it into industrial generator, fried spark triggered blast, all acrid smoke and exit. These ships, cloud skimmer models, they house a quirk, a contextual novelty wrapped in rephrasal heat shrouds. The particulate combustion auxiliary engine was never meant for much more than low-risk thrust perpetuation in polluted atmospheres. The scramjet engine vacuums smog, splits offending atoms at incredible heats for the push. It's what drew me to purchase. I can picture a blue sky and gleaming ship. I can picture happy. But I don't feel it. I'd rather burn detritus, embrace grit, ride with purpose. I could have bought a brand new ship, but gambled on repairs. I chose this path, perhaps I chose wrong, but I own that call. I yearn impatient for galactic expanse, but necessary steps have always been within reach. Each day further is a day one, even the narrow margins, the on and off days and the off days and those worse yet. I am not where I wish to be, who I wish to be, but I will own that. I will patchwork my way to healthy enough. Jose, uh, fantastic from Thank you, his Jose. Then you book um great hear from Shane and what an extraordinary piece from Tom Hogan. I've See, watched I'm it before. Watching that again. Uh, I was watching David Pawsey, we could watch it again. The next line break will just be Tom Hogan in the shower for an hour. Yeah, um that's, that's all we I need. Want. But 
lovely to hear from all of them. Um, check out Tom uh, Hogan's. He, he's got a site where he makes up the names of mock bands and then creates their music and bios. He's a bit of a freak. He tours. Where he can't he tour you? at the moment. He's based in Sydney. He was touring a play as well. Um, fantastic he... poet as Scott Sandwich. Check out his work. Is check he out. Band or is well, he, he makes bands up. I think he's got a band. He's put an album out. He's one of those strange, beautiful freaks, Tom Hogan, that just he's worked with Eleanor Jackson, the poet, uh, quite a bit as well, collaborated. Um, but yeah, check out Tom. How did you find out about him? I first saw Tom performing at Woodford Folk Festival, yeah. Scott Sandwich. And that uh, makes yeah. me think of Hope One. I miss I miss I, uh, miss, I miss Woodford crew I miss and Rico. QPF crew and all the poetry community, the way you kind of meet at these particular junctions. Anyway, lots of love to all the um mm. I, I, I don't do the word poetry family because I feel like no. it's been commodified or slamily. I don't really like that one either. But um, yeah, my heart to poetry community uh, and the, may we meet Community's at points. Community is okay. Yeah, yeah, community. <laughs> I don't That's know. The everything's, everything's bugging me tonight. Look, I'm sorry. There was a dip in our viewership during the kind of dissing of Patterson. So we'll try and redeem. I'll try and redeem myself as best don't. as I can as a poetry no, producer. No, sucks. Oh, well, let's move on from that. Um, but check out Recent Work Press as well. We've had three readers from there. We're about to do another Recent Work Press giveaway of Jose's hey. book, Errant Night. But before we do that, let's see who what's, won. What's that, Mel? Slamunity. <laughs> Slamunity. Wow, that's a mouthful. And here is the winner of Damon's book. I'm off shot. That's terrible production oh. values. Um, of Damon's book. You've got to make Go them, for it. Make yeah, dramatic. here we are, Jen. You go for it. You, you enter. I've talked well. enough. Hope, Christine, Mel, Rowan, Ez, Christine, Hope, Carolyn. Scott Patrick Again! Mitchell. Didn't you win like Scott Patrick Mitchell? You've won a few times. Hey, Scott, Scott Patrick, Patrick Mitchell, Patrick how many Mitchell? things do you enter collectively each week? Oh. I want to know your win-loss ratio. Is this hey, a what's... kind of gambling kind hey, of thing going you know on, poetic gambling. You know what I'd love to see in the comments are um, things people have won. Can can you tell me the biggest thing you've ever won, the most expensive thing you've ever won other than a chicken? Oh, I won a poetry prize, which was worth a lot of money. That was nice. That was the first thing that came to mind. But That's so true. Tell but, us about that. But, How uh, much was that? But in terms of – I like I, – look, I really like when you win like – um. I felt like I'd won when they had the COVID food vouchers. That's how cheap I am. Like, <laughs> you know, those twenty-five dollar vouchers. Are I was so disappointed going? when I've still got mine when they as well. when it ran out. You just went me twenty-five dollars, and you, you might order an extra kind of like a spring gonna, roll over. Yeah, or, yeah. I'm gonna have a dessert tonight. Born to win, Scott Patrick Mitchell. <laughs> oh, edit gambling. Oh. So, yeah. how much was the um, Victoria's primary is price? I uh, look, I always had half of it in tax and reduce and increased um, child support. Anyway, that's, another that's the art. But I just want to quickly tell you, guess what I won when I was 14? What? I won $1,000 um, through, you remember um, the Triple M, the Thunder trucks? Remember the cars that you Oh, the Black drive? Thunder. Black Thunder. Yeah. Um, that's yeah. very Sydney. A Black Thunder turned up at um, our house with a $1,000 check that I won when I was 14. Oh, and I also won tickets to and flights to go to Melbourne to see In Excess. I was in the front row. Take that, Scott Patrick Mitchell. What you yeah. got? What you got? <laughs> Let's see. The, the, the person that's won the most tonight, we will give the least to. So that's me. Um Let's get this uh, next win, week, Win Errant Night. Night. Is that where we're up yes, to? Yes, by Jose Ebert with the hashtag, oh. hashtag work Jersey. So W-O-R-K-J-E-R-Z-Y. Get that down below. Put it in the comments. That's David Pawsey's subtle way of saying And you can win an moving. errant night. Um, actually, tell us about your most errant night you've ever had. No, we'll save that for later. Um how can I like you that say phrase. Just one? There's so many. Uh, so yes, it's nice to be here with you. Oh, How look, nice. go Liz Murphy, go Mel. I, oh, I want Mel. a yellow Walkman at a blue light disco. I am so impressed by that. That would have been like gold. So, no, it that, was yellow. How great wearing! I love the contrast. I hope you. <laughs> are. I want a Spice Girl CD. <laughs> it was the best day ever. That's hard to beat. <laughs> 
Lauren won colored pencils for dressing as possum magic at book week. Oh, colored pencils. Hopefully, hopefully that was when you were a child. That um, wasn't just this year. Was yeah. It, it wasn't Lauren? like a recent thing. Was it? Um, no, that's cool. Like Damien, did you, does that mean, what is that? I, don't I know got five numbers in tax lotto. So what does that mean? What you did probably you probably won $28. Did you win $28 Damien? If not. Hey, well done for winning your, um, 30 and 30 today, Damien. I saw that you were the, your one. I shan't enter the yeah. Yeah. It's got Patrick Scott Mitchell. Patrick You're already Mitchell a winner. Has... You back away from the goods. Just take two steps back from the hashtag. Um, um Next section, things just look. This show is it keeps going to other levels, and the next section is, next another, level. is another level. A thousand bucks, Damien won a thousand bucks. Wow, five numbers that's great. I won a thousand bucks too. Yeah, but I had to deal with a black thunder in my driveway while mum and dad were fighting. I want a CD for best dress. Is mum a smurf? <laughs> Mel, you are so funny. I love you. Solid so life choices everywhere here. I love it. Um, cool. What do we got? Go. I don't know. I just want to keep reading these. Oh, Kay Coddy. Do you remember Kay Coddy? Yes, I do. I do I too. Do. She never showed. Should we give her a call? No. Rachel, do you want us to get in contact with Kay Coddy for you? Hi, this is Annie and David from Red Room Poetry. We're just ringing on behalf of Rachel J. K. Where Coddy. were you? Where were you? Yeah. Yeah. Explain your absence. Yeah, K. For these 32 years. Explain. Yeah, K. Um, coming up. So coming up. Um, I'm pretty excited about our yeah. next two. I'm excited about this whole show, but this end, this is pretty special ending. This is like <clears throat> coming up. Actually, there's double endings. It's all good. What? The replacement sailing teachers were hot. Sorry, we're probably going to go a little bit over time <laughs> so tonight, but we have coming Don't worry up. about calling Kay Cotty. It worked out for the best. Do you want me to call I'm Kay? I'm just going to go to say, shot and let you announce it. I'll say, thanks for not turning up, Kay. It worked out a treat because the replacement teachers were hot. Thanks, Kay. Um, come back in the shot no, because no. we're going to rave about Sister's Eye. Okay. So Sister's Eye, where to start? Where do you start? First of all, are you following Sister's Eye on social media? That's the first question. Um, I receive, I'm a Patreon. I've signed up as a little Patreon of Sister's Eye, which you can do. Patreon's amazing, actually. You can really support people who yeah, you, I, you want to. It's targeted. I think I only do a dollar a month, which is cheap. So but, do I. But, but, but what I love about but Sister's Eye. the two of us, it's a coffee. Do what you, do what you can contribute. Anyway, Sister's Eye, amazing. Um social justice, arts advocate, community organiser, spoken word artist, human spirit. There's no one else like Sister's Eye on social media, actually. So we have um, Sister's Eye, we've commissioned a spoken word piece, uh, which is about to be the debut of now. And after Sister's Eye in this section, we'll hear we from have, Shane again. We have the last bit from Shane again. Uh, from Recent Work Press, answering other of your questions, and then we'll be back with you for a special See you ending. In a See you soon. Hi, my name is Sister Zai, and today I'm going to read you a poem called Richa Pera. It's inspired by a folk song from my culture, one of my cultures, um, and was, I think, brought to popularity with this particular song by a folk singer by the name of Thomas Mapfumo. Some of you may be familiar, and also by Chiwoni Somaraere. <laughs> When you remember that you, you, yes, you are sacred. When you remember that you are the answer to the most ancient of prayers. When you rise up in your power, intelligence, rise up. 
Shaka tanga riniko, shicha pera seiko. Shicha pera, when you remember that you are sacred, you are the energetic signature of the land where your spirit came into being, encased in flesh, made from the flesh of your mother's flesh and her mother's flesh and her mother's flesh, going back to the original body. You are the most ancient of prayers. You are your ancestors' wildest dreams. Shicha pera, shicha pera, shicha pera, shicha pera, shicha pera. When you remember to rise up, rise up in your power intelligence. Shaka tanga riniko, shicha pera seiko, shicha pera, shicha pera, shicha pera, shicha pera, shicha pera, shicha pera. When you remember to rise up in your power intelligence, when you remember that you are the answer to your ancestors' most ancient prayer, you. Of the abode of your ancestors. Jichapera, Jichapera, when you rise up in this power intelligence, when you rise up, rise up, rise up. Shaka tanga riniko, Jichapera seiko, Jichapera, 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 Jichapera. Thank you so much for listening. My name is Sister Zai. Sister is spelled S-I-S-T-A. Sister Zai, Z-A-I. You can find me on all the socials. Thank you for listening. Zicha pera. Uh, now some questions. Um, how important is an in-house poetry editor? And do they need to be a practicing poet too? <clears throat> I think it's really important to have an in-house poetry editor. Um, you know, often we receive manuscripts that are, are honed to a point, and, and this is often uh, different points, but um, they've already probably been through several sets of eyes. Um, but sometimes a manuscript, and often a manuscript needs a, a new set of eyes uh, to reveal things perhaps the poet has become too close to. Um, this is not usually at the level of the poem or the language or the embodied voice that the poet has. Um, it's around things perhaps like the ordering of poems and uh, making calls on, on weaker work and just trying to generally hone the collection to a, a sharper statement of intent. Uh, we try to work collaboratively with our poets in helping them get to a point where the collection is tighter and showcases their work more clearly. Uh, do they have to be a practicing poet? I don't think so, um, but just a really good reader of poetry. And Hi. So do we have Anne-Marie back? Hi. Thank you, Shane. And sis Hi. sister, S-I-S-T-A, Zyzander. Um, that was just a piece of fire and soul and just great. Great poetry. Publishers out there, whether it be Shane or someone else, when Sister's Eye, that's the kind of poetry. I want to read. I, I want to read I want to read that collection. If that's what Sister's Eye wants. That's if that, that's what you want. Whatever Sister's Eye wants. It's what we want. Exactly. Hey, um, um, we're running a little bit behind because we've been. Well, yeah, time's a weird thing right now. But we are. On, thank you me. for staying with us. And through all these amazing artists, many of who've lost gigs, all these artists have been. Um, uh, the poets are being paid for this work as well. So just know that. Wow, um, Ali Brown. That I've, means a lot. I've been Can resuscitated. I, I feel uh, like I'm going to need to use that quote in our acquittals. Yes. This this program resuscitated me. Australia Council, uh, yeah, I'd probably go for that. Um, Thank you, Sister Zai. Thank you. Amazing art. Just great art. And Make sure you follow Sister Zai, S-I-S-T-A. And when great art is made by great people, and, and particularly artists, you don't have to, that give as mm, well. There's mm. something about that that's next level. The generosity. Okay, we, next giveaway. Uh, let's see who won in these exciting times. Was it Jose's work yet? Jose's book. Work Jose. Work Jose sounds like... Um, uh, don't say it. I don't know. I don't know. I wasn't saying anything. Um, oh, 
Carolyn Newman. That's fantastic. I don't know you. you've won a book. Uh, I hope you're in a time of poetry need and it uh, resuscitates you, as someone else said. Uh, have a good night or hang on, Carolyn. You just don't leave now. I've got another section. That's Yeah, stick around because right now our last two things tonight are... We've got a fabulous um, finish. Um, we have a big finale. Yeah. Um, one of the people who is in the finale is actually on mine at the moment. I know they are because I've been seeing their names popping up. So what well, version of them is anyway? Um, Harrison is a dimension of the artist Hope, Hope One. So Hope One is um, a world champion beatboxer. Um, actually did a sold out workshop last Wednesday night for Red Room Poetry. Um, and Hope, you need to follow Hope, follow Hope's work. Hope's really um, focusing on their writing at the moment, which is really exciting. And um, Harrison is like a an attitude. It's, it's um, beyond alter ego, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. It's beyond. And, and Harrison's going to. It's much more than an alter ego. It's an embodiment. Harrison a... has responded to the, the prompt, what does poetry uh, <laughs> mean to me? <laughs> And off the back of Harrison, we're then going to go into the next installment of uh, oh, yeah. Vidya Rajan's What is Poem? And today it's looking at how poetry and gaming may or may not intersect. So we're going to go from Harrison to Vidya. And also, please, you'll see a little survey come up, Culture Count Survey, about line break. Can if you, you want to see things like this. The person that was resuscitated. Yeah, put that in the comments. please add that in? So but we're seriously, doing a survey that helps please fill us it out um, and continue fill it out. doing this. Yeah. Uh, we'll see you on the other side of these two amazing Kia moments. Kia Harrison. Harrison, Vidya. Welcome. Soon. Welcome. Poetry means to me a range of things. It means I can really put words to my emotions and give them to girls. It's my vessel to picking up chicks. Poetry means everything to me. Hi. Remember the good days when the children kids would frolic in the meadows and have a beautiful time and families would sit around the table before the violence and the media when there was nothing more to do but oh <laughs> recite poetry to each other next to a fire and the singing don't despair we have a solution for the we're gamifying poetry! What? No way! Introducing Poetry the Game! What? No way! It has rounds like... Guess the poem! Um, okay, so there's two rows and I'm like, this one's cool, and this one's not, but I want to go to the not one. Did you guess that one? Never mind, there's always other rounds, like guess the poetic basis style, like dictionary. John John! And of course, there's always my favourite, simile, metaphor, or that other thing. It's the other thing. It's a game of high risk. You have to eat the poem. And high reward! You've been shortlisted for a poetry prize. Really? And it doesn't come with money, but something better. Oh my god! An interview at a local university's creative writing program for a casual professional tutor job! Oh, this is more than I could have dreamed of! Yes! For one semester. I'm so happy. Available from all good. My website, please. Please. With poetry every day, we can find the way out of the mess. And it's fun. Watch the ones. Oh, hey, we hey. just commenting. We're just on commenting on Vidge's. That was great. Um, which we, is the best one? We had a bit of a chop there. You only got a little preview of Harrison, which is probably good because like Harrison is too extraordinary to get one. David Cosi, can we add the Vidge, the Hope, well, the Harrison? It, it, it may be that 
we accidentally edited it short. But anyway, there's a taster of Harrison. Hope uh, won. That was yeah, a whole file. That, that was, was our error. So what I'm we so might sorry, Harrison. Ne- bring Harrison do... back next week. I Should think. we revive? Yes, we Let's will bring resuscitate. the full Harrison. That's a taster of Harrison for next week. Yeah. Uh, and that's video with What is Poem. Thank you so much for tuning into uh, Line Break. Please do the survey, which really helps us out. And if you do the survey, I'll give you 50 bucks. Well, I won't. I won't give you 50 bucks. That other guy that won $1,000, he'll give you. Wasn't that? Scott Patrick Mitchell will give you things because he's winning. He's a winner. Yeah, Damien and Um, Scott Patrick Mitchell are going to just dish out stuff. Please fill out the survey, please. Uh, This week, let's talk about what's coming out in Poetry Poetry Month this week. So tomorrow night is Vidja's uh, Poetry and Comedy Meeting Workshop. Which is sold out. So oh, it's kind it's of and not recorded, but it's good that, oh. to flag the disappointment you'll now be feeling. <laughs> um, it's really uh, good to say what else is on with other orgs, like our daily poems, thirty and thirty. The prompts come up at three pm. You can write a poem as a good poet you every guys are day. Going wild over Check the it out on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Red Room Poetry, but also this Friday we have a Friday night we have the a showcase. WA showcase, no South Australian showcase. And that is at the State Library in partnership with Writers SA. And that is an incredible. Thank lineup. you, Jessica Ellis. Off the top of my head, Jill Jones, Nat Harkin, Peter Goldsworthy, uh, Manuel Yunus. Inc- incredible lineup. Uh, we, it's a really good. Who's emceeing at Manuel? But yeah, and just want to say too that like we had so many. We had three or we've had three or four live state showcases that had to be cancelled either just before or during. So it's going to be amazing. This will be apart from the Wheeler Center, one of the few we've been able to do. We got in by one day. So it was a lockdown. Keep your fingers crossed day. for SA that they can have their live um, showcase. And then uh, Friday night, the Queensland Poetry Awards with QPF Friends in the Room. Um, they're live streaming their awards on Friday night. But if you go to the Poetry Month calendar, which is a tab on every Poetry Month webpage on Red Poetry. Room, Poetry, Poetry. <laughs> Apothery Poetry Poetry Month. Look, lockdown fatigue. Thank you for hanging in here with us. Thank you Um, so much for your company. It's been so, so beautiful seeing you all tonight. Go watch Patterson and Eat Dumplings. (laughs) Lots of love. I'm going to go see if there's a black thunder in the driveway. Take good care, poets. Over and out. Peace.